Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 4 of my Minecraft Let's Play. Once again, I am Vanilla Prison, and in the past couple episodes, I promised you guys that we were going to start working on a creeper farm, and I have been doing that, but I've been doing it mostly off camera in between last episode and this episode, because it's a lot of boring building. I actually did live stream about three hours of the building. I am live streaming now on Twitch. I'll put the link to my Twitch channel in the description there. Well, let's go ahead and see what we've done. You can see it there. Oh, I just accidentally took a screenshot. That works. I've got two out of the four towers built and I severely, severely underestimated the amount of wood that it's actually going to take. And as you can see here, these are made of two different types of woods. That one right there is made out of the birch that I got from chopping down this island. And that one right there is made out of dark oak that I got by deforesting over there. And the reason I switched up wood is because of how much wood it actually took. That first tower, yeah, took all of that away from me. And I figured, you know what, I really don't want to go through the process of chopping down hundreds and hundreds more birch trees again. So I figured I'd do something a little bit more interesting and make each one of these towers out of a different type of wood. So that one's dark oak, and then I'm going to do spruce and jungle. And I want to do those because you can plant them in a 2x2 two two tree and get a lot of wood really fast. And honestly, you can't tell that much because it's so dark. I mean, when you get up close, you can see, yeah, that's definitely darker than the other, and it's different types of wood. But it's not just such an eyesore as you would imagine to have two different colors, because they're all just black looking out of the corner of your eye. But let's go ahead and get up there and kind of check out what it looks like. I've just got this scaffolding post here going up and down. And I do have two... Okay, I do have two dirt pillars that'll be going up to the top where these other towers are being built at. But you can see we've got some half slabs and glass on each layer and that is to prevent the spiders from spawning. And then on top of each layer is just completely covered with trap doors so that the only thing that we get spawning is creepers. And I guess I'll go down here and pick these guys up real quick because I needed to go to the top. And it's about to be nighttime, but that's fine. I think that was all of them. So we'll go on top and I'll show you how the redstone looks for it. It's really not that complicated. It's your pretty typical timer. Just a giant clock going through with a bunch of repeaters that uses a comparator to compare the, sis the signal and keep the chain going. And how close am I? I'm getting close. There we go. So you can see here, I've got a lever on the back of each one that turns it on and off. So it powers this and sends the signal through. And then when it comes back around, it says, hey, it's less than that, and continues it on. And there is an observer block underneath this repeater right here. So every time that it gets powered or unpowered, it gets turned off and on and restarts the system. So the water just goes over to the very edge of every floor. It'll probably be easier to see on this one when it starts. And it's a little bit of a slow timer. I want there to be enough time for every creeper to get over to the edge and fall like that. So there you go, the water comes all the way to the edge of each platform and then the circuit turns off and it retracts. Pretty simple. And I actually just finished building this second tower here before I started recording. So I've only had one tower that's been running this whole time, and even just from that one tower, I've been getting a good amount of drops. So let me get a sleep real quick, and I will show you what I've collected so far. Alright, so we'll go down here. Down that little ladder that I showed you last time to the collection area. I haven't set up a quick drop to it yet because I'm just kind of lazy, honestly. I've been too busy building that. And from one tower running, that's what we got. I mean, now it's two towers, but most of this, I'd say probably at least to here, was just from one tower after about four to five hours of running that while I'm standing next to it. And no caves are lit up. 
So once we get all four of those completed, built up, and a lot more caving done, that's going to start producing gunpowder like crazy, which is awesome because we're going to be building a lot of TNT, and I plan on killing the Ender Dragon and getting some Elytra really soon. So we'll need loads and loads of rockets. So gunpowder is great. But I'm not going to build that on camera or finish it today because I kind of need a break from it. I'll probably do one tower in between this and the next episode and then this final tower after that and just kind of split it up like that. But today's project is I want to get started on a storage room. I have a lot of farms planned for this area that are going to be producing large amounts of items and I'm going to need a place to store that because that little bitty room down there dug in isn't going to work. So I've figured it out, and the middle of the island is at about 270, negative 250, which is right here on this block. So I'm going to center my storage room on this block, but down lower, which means I've got to take out this mountain here. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work taking that out and start laying out the storage room, and you'll be able to see what I'm thinking for it. <laughs> And it is done. We got the mountain, well not mountain, but little hill flattened out there. And it's kind of messy right now, but this should give you the general idea of the size of this storage room. So it's got eight separate sections of chest for eight chests each. So each floor or level of chest is a stack. And there's going to be four floors, maybe five. So in total, we've got 64 times 5 double chests. I don't even know. I mean, that's 256 plus 64. So over 300 double chests. And this is how we're going to do it. You see, I got some stuff in my inventory here. So let's go ahead and build up just one of these cells. So you can kind of get the picture on what we're going to be doing. And like that. All those are doubles. So that right there is 64 chests. So 32 double chests, just a four by eight. Then we're gonna go behind them all and add our hoppers in. It's going to be an auto sorting system. because I really don't feel like running around and sorting all of my items at the same time. And then this is going to come on the back of each one of them like so. And let me just build my way up here. And then we are going to have hoppers facing into these blocks like that. And those will go into the chest, that's fine. And then on the back of these is going to be the sorter. Go two like that. And this will all make sense here in a second when I get it completely built. That. Torches over here. Peters. Uh, 
Oh, one short. All right, so basically how the system works is it's going to be like this on all eight of these sets of chests, and I'm going to have a water line with ice that just circles all the way around the thing in a constant circle, and it's going to carry items that are deposited into that line over top of these hoppers, and these hoppers are now able to lock with certain items. So if I do just grab some seeds, for instance, if I put seeds into this hopper to lock this in to be that type of item, you'll see it'll go and drain this until it gets to 41 items. Right there, it stops, and then the other 18 are in here. And how this works is this comparator reads the output coming from that line. So if there's more than 45 items in this, it'll turn this redstone dust on, which turns this repeater on, turns that torch off, and unlocks the hopper. And so items will drain until it gets to 45 items and it shuts itself off. This block gets powered so that hopper stops pulling from it and it just keeps its one there and the rest will be in here. And it's going to be like that for every single one of these. So each one of these columns of chests is going to be a different item that can be sorted. And as the water passes over it, these hoppers here, it'll only pick up the item that's necessary. And I'm not going to keep this like that. If you put items in it like this that you know aren't going to get picked up, it's not going to be stone bricks. But items that you know aren't going to go through the system like this, it'll lock it. Because what can happen is let's say I have it like this and I have a farm that produces a whole crap load of seeds and five stacks run into this at the same time and this whole thing fills up. What's going to happen at that point, let me just grab some seeds and show you. Make it a little easier to explain. So if this thing is completely full of seeds, it's going to drain from here and then here and then here, and then those. And you'll see once it gets to 45 items, so this will have three in total, it'll stop draining. Almost there. And there you go. So now it'll stop draining, but the thing is, these items are open now. So if something else were to come in and get dropped on it, like say a piece of redstone, it would just go through the system and come down in to be sorted. Oh, it'll go here. To be sorted into the system and that's not what you want you want to keep only these items able to come in here so you do this and get items you know aren't going to get picked up and just fill in this spot that way no matter how many come into here it'll always go back down to 41 with that only item in there and that's all you'll be able to pick up so i'm not really sure which item I'm going to use as a filler block yet, or which items I want to get stored where in these chests. But I am going to go ahead and get it all set up and ready to be filled. Now, I probably won't fill in all the hoppers and stuff yet. I'll just fill them in one cell at a time because that's all the hoppers I have. I do have quite a bit of iron over here thanks to this small little iron farm. But I still don't think that's going to be enough to completely finish the system. So I'm going to hook up the water lines, add the rest of the chests at least, and get it ready. And then whenever I need more storage as I add more farms, I'll just do the hoppers and the wiring in the back as we go along here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a sleep real quick since it's turning night. Add the rest of the chests. I need to go south to the... Um, what are they? Glade icebergs, those things, and grab some ice real quick and set up the water lines and I'll show you whenever it's more ready and complete and you'll get a better idea of how things will look. All right, so it's been a couple hours now and I've got everything set up to be ready to go. As you can see, I've got all the chests placed in and each one of these little sections is a stack of chests. So if you think about it, that's two stacks of wood logs, that's two stacks of wood logs and it's, 16 stacks of logs in total to do all of this 
so my wood is gone. I thought it was going to last me for a good while because, let's face it, I had an entire double chest full of wood. And I got through three and a half episodes before it's all gone. That's all the birch I have left. That's all the wood I have left. Thanks to this. And to finish putting all the hoppers in the back, it would be eight stacks of hoppers. Well, I guess seven stacks because I've already placed these. And I definitely don't have enough iron for that, or enough wood at this point, so I will just be filling it in as I go. But this is what we're looking at. So I've got the water hooked up behind every section. You can see here it's just got ice and water over top of the hoppers. It slides along the ice, and it'll just go round and round in a circle. And you'll notice on the corner of each side right here, I have these water pillars. These have been dug out all the way down to bedrock, and I just lined the sides of it with stone brick, so if I'm ever digging, I know that there's something there. And at the bottom of each one is a piece of soul sand, so that it's got bubble columns up every single corner all the way from bedrock. That way, whenever I'm making farms, and it has something underground, or I have collection that goes underground, like the creeper farm right here, I can get the coordinates of it one of these four and figure out which one is closest then just dig an item tunnel over to it and shoot the items into it and when the items go up into the bubble column they will hit this glass right here and stop and then just go into the system and on their way into this giant circle now as for what we're going to put into it this actually i still have one block up here i believe yep so this is going to be the first side that I use, because it's the only side that's hooked up right now. It's got all the hoppers in the back, all of the redstone's done for it. So we are going to start filling our storage room from right there. And let me put some of this away. I need to make a stack. Where is it? Right here. Just go ahead and make a stack of those. So let's see, that'd be... Um, I need 8 times 8, so that should be... Is that enough wood? No, that's not enough wood. That's not going to be anywhere near. Okay, so that would be 8 times... I need a whole stack of wood. Okay, so you know what? Let's just do this. Ooh, actually... Yeah, I do. Look at that. Okay. I had some leftover sticks. So, 1, 2, 3... These item frames are so expensive. It is one wood block per item frame. And I'm out of sticks, so let's just get more so I always have some on me. There we go. Alright, so there's our first stack of item frames. Let's go ahead and put those up there. And this probably isn't the final design for how I'm going to label each one. But right now I've just got some, ups or not upside down, but some stairs facing the other way on top so that I can still open these top chests. And I think for our first farms, we're just going to get the basics out of the way. So that means we want some for seeds, some for wheat, some for carrots, some for potatoes, beetroots along with their seeds, and we're going to throw in... Bamboo and sugarcane. So that right there will tell you what my plans are for upcoming episodes is getting the farms out of the way for these. So I need to make a wheat farm, I need to make a carrot farm, I need to make a potato farm, a beetroot farm, a sugarcane farm, and a bamboo farm. And hook them all up so that all of their drops funnel into this system and into the respective chest. Now that shouldn't be too difficult. The difficult part, I think, will be figuring out where I want to put everything. But I'll get to that later, because first, I need to get rid of this mess. And if you're watching, you're probably thinking, well, what about items that aren't farmable? What about things that you just need to store, like, other than what can just be filtered in? Because if you count it up right, there are 64 individual items that can be farmed. And there's a lot more than 64 items in Minecraft. So this is the total farmable storage. Things that will collect automatically for me around. But there's going to be a second floor, either above or below. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. That's just going to be a traditional storage room. A big old chest monster. 
where I can organize things kind of like it's over here. Just have them labeled and say, this is what it is, put it in there. So that's what's going to happen in that. And I'll take out this little room and clean up the place and kind of make it better. I'm not really sure what I want to build this storage room out of primarily. I'm thinking I kind of want to get some concrete. So go grab a bunch of sand, a bunch of gravel. And do the whole thing out of like cyan concrete or something like that. But I don't really know yet. It'll probably remain open for a little while until I get inspired to do something with it. But we now have a fully functioning storage room that is auto-sorting. Or at least part of it's auto-sorting because the rest of it isn't built. And we can start adding our farms in. And that's really all I had today. It's a little bit of a shorter episode, but there was a lot that went into it. We got the first peek at the mob farm, and actually, while I've been down here building it, let's just see how many drops we've got from it. That and the iron farm. So, yep, lots of iron coming in. Those flowers will come in handy whenever I have a bee farm later on, too. And whenever I want to make red dye for any of the concrete or wool or whatever I might need. So, let's see how much we actually have down here. Not bad, not bad. About two hours of work, got that, so... Once we add two more towers, like I said, and finish the caving, that'll be producing like crazy. Yeah, we have got a lot of done episode. Uh, let's do that. Try that one more time. We have got a lot done this episode in terms of time spent on it. In the mob farm, we got the storage room laid out and ready to accept items and farms as they go in. So I'm going to call it here today. If you like this episode, drop a like comment subscribe all that fun stuff i'm missing a helmet okay and i will see you guys next time